Hey guys, welcome to another episode of TFB TV. Today we've got a special episode and we have our very own Nathan S. Howdy guys. We went to a three gun shoot in South Central Gun Club in Southern Indiana and me and Nathan both competed today, did somewhat all right, somewhat bad. We'll see in a second <laughs> here, you'll see with the footage. But uh, yeah, we figured we'd talk about three gun and the sport and why we're into it and what kind of stuff we use and that sort of thing. So Nathan, why do, what's your old take on three gun? Why does this trip your trigger? Why did you get into it? Good question. So I, I've done a little bit of IDPA, USPSA, but for me, I hate to say it, it's the same gun over and over again. It's the same mechanics, the same type of reloading. Uh, yeah, come on, need something to get the blood going, you know? Okay. Um, so for me, three gun is more interesting because you're able to take shotguns and you're completely changing the manual of arms every mm. time you change your weapon system. So it's a lot more challenging and interesting to me than the other competitive sports, which, you know, they also have their place, but this is what I like. So. It's a more, I agree, it's a more holistic approach to shooting or using all three disciplines all the time sort of thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I kind of, I'm interested in competitive shooting more for a functional aspect of it in that it gives me time on the gun, it puts me under stress, it puts me under duress, um, which do I can't do to myself on my own in a square range sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I can come out here and I can achieve that and oftentimes I think you think you're really good with a gun, we're really good with manipulating malfunctions, reloads, whatever, but you put that little bit of stress under you and everything just goes haywire. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to try to fix and I want to try to get better and better every time. That's kind of my view on it, but mm -hmm. interesting. Nice. So um, what are you running today? My gun is the product development test bed for a lot of what faxon has got coming out here. Um, it's got one of our 18 gunner barrels. We developed that just for three gun. I did because I like shooting three gun and to me there was a better way to balance a barrel. So these have really taken off. We've, been, we've loved that. Um, we've got our lightweight bolt carrier group here on the inside. I'm using it attached to one of our new three port muzzlock muzzle brakes. These are coming soon. Yeah. And the handguard here is our carbon fiber handguard. Huh? For me I was using an Aero Precision AR upper and lower. Um, I had the PDQ on it, uh, mm -hmm. just like Nathan has. I have a couple other things on it that are just to my individual taste, an aim point, a 3 uh, three by magnifier. And in addition to this, I also had my AKS-74U uh, SBR out today, and that was more of just a fun thing. I just wanted to bring oh. it out just to shoot it for fun. What do you think of the stage today as an RO and as a shooter? So it, it was a little unusual, which I enjoyed today. The stages, for the most part, nothing was longer than 60 seconds, but there was a lot of dynamic changing between firearms and a lot of thinking that had to go on. For mm -hmm. example, uh, on the long range stage, turning and burning, but I completely forgot the four long range targets. Just flat Yeesh. out shot. Yep. Wow, that's that will drop you four points? No. Well, that'll drop me at the very least 60 seconds in terms of penalties on that, so we'll see how that turns out for the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking about penalties, there's a lot of, this is a very rule heavy sport and very, you know, if you don't do this, you don't do that, and it's completely understandable because it's, you know, firearms and Mm -hmm. Let's face it, gun safety is the most important thing out here. A buddy of mine came out here and was disqualified from the match because he dropped his handgun accidentally from his holster. So mm -hmm. just be wary if you're interested in multi-gun. It's a great sport, but you really have to pay attention to the safety rules. So could you tell us a little more about the types of firearms out here? I saw this is very, the sport is very AR heavy. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think the only person out here with anything other than an AR was myself with an AK. Um, <laughs> and then it's also very Glock, XD, and 1911 heavy as well in terms of handguns. And then shotguns, I'm seeing a lot of Remingtons, a lot of Benelli's and Berettas maybe? Yep. Yeah. So primarily you'll see on the shotgun side, Stoger is the big one that's come on board because it's, for lack of a better way of phrasing it, a Benelli light. Mm -hmm. It's a $500 Benelli that with a little bit of gunsmithing you do at home, you can make it just as good mm. as the base shotgun. So you see that a lot now. But yeah, you see 223... 5.56 five, almost exclusively on the AR because as, you know, as everyone knows on the AR, it's soft shooting. It's got long range potential, which typically three gun doesn't shoot past 600 yards. Mm -hmm. So you can reach that with a 5.56 five, without going transonic. Mm -hmm. uh, you're able to tune it. I, and same thing with my race gun here. I've got an adjustable gas block, a lightweight carrier, and I'm able to take this thing down to, basically everyone said, well, that's lighter than a 22. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the point. That's part of the game that's attached to when you try to be competitive with it. Mm -hmm. You do occasionally see other platforms. We'll see scars on occasion. We'll see some of the bull pups every once in a while. But almost exclusively, it's set up for ARs. Yeah, yeah. What about handguns? 
No, good question. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a lot of 1911s and 2011s at the high end because a lot of guys like the trigger. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be just as good as some of the hot and AR triggers with that compared to the striker fires. Mm -hmm. But you see also a lot of the striker fires because a lot of guys like consistent pulls yeah. and relatively inexpensive firearms, especially on the local level. On the national level, there's a lot more of the high end. The 1911s and yep. that kind of high end custom stuff. I saw, I noticed with some of the semi-automatics, some of them were jamming in the morning and I've, I think it's something to do with the moisture of the shells or something and they're jamming a bit more than the pump actions. The shells are getting stuck in there. Anything on that at all? Or? Well, I I don't shoot any of the inertia guns. I okay. shoot a Beretta 1301. I like the gas guns personally, and a lot of that's personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, some of the guys who, you, when you're starting to tune your inertia springs and everything to your exact ammo load and other things, yeah, temperature can have an effect on that. Yeah. Uh, not common, but it does happen. Okay. And what about the stage you were at today? I noticed you had something up with your Beretta, I think? Yep, right. so yeah. the number one cause of human or of gun malfunctions in addition to IT issues is the bag of meat operating the particular device, and I was the bag of meat today. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to go load it, basically the stage required you to start with a completely empty gun, and then you'd put shells in it and then engage targets. So I went to try and do a quad load, which is where you have four shells in one hand, and you'll load two at a time. And so my first two, I did not crick in my thumb to actually insert the shell all the way into the tube of my shotgun, mm -hmm. which caused a malfunction. That was me. So you will saw in the video where I stop, diagnose it, get my finger in through the ejection port, get the shell seated, and then continue loading. Mm -hmm. But that kind of piece, you know, and even in the local competition, that costs seven seconds. That'll probably cost 20% in terms of that stage for my score. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So what, what would your advice be for new guys and new guys and girls trying to get into a uh, multi-gun or three-gun across the country uh, mm -hmm. looking at it and say maybe they're apprehensive or scared or I can't do this, that's something that's way beyond me. What would, mm -hmm. what would you say to somebody like that if they're right in front of you? Go out and shoot. Go out and shoot? It, it, because so long as you have the base equipment, 30-round mm -hmm. magazine, an AR-15 that functions, a pistol and a shotgun you're good you can show up and you can see what it's like and if that's the sport for you mm -hmm. and then i tell you go try the other competitive sports as well you know you've got idp has got pistol caliber carbine which is you know making a roaring uh debut so there's lots of things that are out there for everybody but the mm -hmm. key is truly just go out and shoot um so within shotgun it's almost exclusively ammunition management mm -hmm. so know how many shells are in your gun approximately how many times you took shot because the last thing you want to do is waste time reloading the shotgun from a bolt locked back to the rear. Mm -hmm. That's the longest amount of time in terms of a shotgun reload. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to rifle and handgun, the minimal amount of movement necessary on the stage. And I can tell you, I personally set, okay, I know this is my stop at a specific spot down the firing lane where I know I'm going to have to engage targets. Mm -hmm. And then for me, I don't track the targets, I track my stops and then engage everything as I see them from the individual stop. Okay. Everybody does it a little bit differently because I mean, it's a different mental game for every shooter out there. Some people like going, that's target one through 25 and I'm going to engage them one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, that works. Mm -hmm. I don't. I like taking a stop and going, all right, I can do that one because it's faster. I don't have to engage it in sequence to try and get more time out of it. <laughs> Thank you Ventura Munitions for sponsoring TFB TV. We really appreciate that and hope you guys will give them a chance. They make some great stuff. Until next time guys.